Fixtures play an important role in your process model and can have a major impact on your scrap rate. The goals of fixturing, first of all, is to minimize setup time because as we know, setup time is a non-value adding portion of our total cycle time. So anything you can do in the fixture design to minimize that setup time is going to lead to a greater percentage of value adding during the process. When you look at a fixture, it will provide this interface between the process, which is typically a machine or some type of workstation, and that interface is going to allow us to have consistent results. And that consistency is in terms of orienting the workpiece with respect to a tool. So as we saw in the CNC examples, uh, we need to create a tool path with respect to the surfaces that we want to create. The other consistent reference would be locating, uh, again, with respect to the tool. We also need to prevent any motion of the workpiece during the process because that will have obvious consequences on the resultant surfaces. And finally, we'll also need to support the workpiece so that there's no bending or deformation of the material uh, throughout the process. Primary factors that you need to consider are, first of all, the product geometry as determined by the design specification. So we have to understand what the geometry is because we'll have to accommodate that in our fixture. We'll also have to consider the material that we're putting into the fixture and uh, the properties of that material because that will affect the clamping forces that can be applied to the surface without causing plastic deformation. And then we need to know something about the forces that the process will apply to our material and subsequently to any supports in the fixture. Finally, in terms of creating our tool paths, we worry about accessibility and therefore fixture components should not adversely affect the ability to access different features on our part. Well, there are a wide range of solutions, of course, uh, some of them you may have seen. Uh, first of all, the most general purpose would be uh, the use of a chuck uh, vise or machine table. Again, these are very generic, not uh, customized to the specific part that we're producing. And so they tend to be, in many cases, a low production volume and also a high degree of product variations because we're trying to accommodate uh, many different types of parts. So it's a fairly generic uh, fixturing device. The next type that you'll see are modular fixtures. And here we're dealing with either low or medium production volume. So we create these fixtures as we need them. And the advantage here is we can accommodate a wide degree of product variety in terms of uh, feature geometry. And then finally, permanent fixtures would be customized fixtures, typically a high production volume environment and usually low product variety. So we don't see a lot of uh, changes in between fixtures. One of the primary purposes of a fixture is to locate surfaces. So you need to look at the product geometry and determine where is the feature? And whenever we ask that question, of course, we're thinking about datums and datum references. So those will come into play because we have to consider with respect to what. And then to determine the location, we'll use what we call locators to position the part. And those locators ultimately will come in contact with surfaces that in turn will be located within the fixture. The referencing, of course, is the position of the workpiece ultimately with respect to a tool. And we want to achieve a repeatability. Every time we put the workpiece into the fixture, we want it to be in the exact same location and orientation. Of course, that will be impossible. So we'll have some contribution to our process capability because of the repeatability of placement. Obviously, the more repeatable, the less of a contribution to the variation in process capability. We will also be restricting the degrees of freedom uh, based upon where we place locators and how many locators we use. Going back to degrees of freedom, if you recall, we have three rotations, 
and three translations. Again, we're not concerned right now about direction, so we'll reduce it down to six degrees of freedom. And these all need to be constrained either by locators or clamps, as we'll see. So the locators are going to be components that restrict the degrees of freedom. And we want to rely mainly on locators in order to do that restriction. A plane lo locator would represent a flat surface. Again, there's uh, no perfect surface, but these are precision components that can be created to simulate a plane. And then we can have concentric locators, which would represent a cylindrical surface, and they could come in contact with other surfaces, typically uh, representing a line uh, in terms of location. And then we could use radial locators, which again would be a cylindrical surface tangent to another surface. We'll use the locators to also counteract the main forces that are exerted uh, upon the workpiece. So clamps should not be used as that primary uh, opposing force. Again, because clamps are going to be adjustable as we see later on. So when we're choosing locators and where we should place them on the fixture, we should think about the types of features that we have based on the design spec and where we are in the manufacturing system. We'll try to contact a flat or cylindrical feature and we have to accommodate the fact that when we look at our dimensional tolerances, our part features will vary if they're a feature of size between LMC and MMC. So we'll have to be able to accommodate workpieces at MMC. Again, that would be the most material on the part. Fixture tolerances, as compared to the design spec tolerances, are usually on the order of one half of what we see in our design spec. Of course, they can be even tighter. Well, as soon as you see that, you should be concerned because that's going to affect how much it costs to produce that fixture, whether it's made from standard components or custom fabrication. We'd also like to add some foolproofing so that when the workpiece is placed into the fixture, it can only be located in a unique orientation and position. So we typically add pins to ensure that there's not a mistake made in terms of the feature that is being oriented. And of course, we should always consider the datum references and that locator should somehow correspond to those datum references, which we'll talk about a little bit later. If I'm doing a flat surface location, I can have a solid support, and that solid support would be some type of flat feature that comes in contact with the fixture surface. I could use an insert that's placed in a hole in the fixture, and that would provide also some support. We can have adjustable supports, and here we can employ the use of lock nuts to lock in a certain uh, position, or we can use threaded supports that are adjustable, and the reason why we might use adjustable supports is due to variation in the location of the surface due to the uh, difference between LMC and MMC. So if we'd like to come in contact with directly with the surface, we can adjust with these supports. When I'm locating holes, I can think of pins uh, that are going to be mounted to a plate, perhaps. And then the pin diameter will be at MMC of the workpiece fixture. So if I have a cylindrical feature, such as a hole, then I'm going to have to create a pin corresponding to that hole at MMC. Note that MMC would be the smallest hole, and so this would be the smallest pin that would fit in that hole. Well, of course, this should raise concerns because what happens when that feature is at LMC? Clearly, there's going to be some ability to move the part around, and that's why we have to go back to our geometric tolerances, especially the position tolerances, and see what the impact is on those position tolerances, which we'll get to later. The locator types that you'll see employed are dowels, which would just be straight cylinders, conical locators, which you can see here, a uh, just a round uh, locator, and a plane locator. 
Again, you tend to see a taper on the end because that allows us to uh, create a, an easy fit when we place the workpiece in the fixture. The round locator, we have a rounded edge at the end here. Again, that allows us to easily fit up against the workpiece. Typically, the contact with the hole is going to be less than one half the hole depth. And there may be uh, slight deviations from that, but that's the typical configuration that you'll see. If I'm locating external surfaces, then I use a nesting locator. And the nesting locator fits around those external surfaces. The fixture is the complement of the workpiece. So I could do a full nesting all around the entire surface, or I could do a partial nesting, which is more typical, uh, and that could represent, for example, corners of a workpiece. Another type of nesting is a V-block that we'll talk about later, and that is used when we have cylindrical features. We can also have a fixed stop locator where there's a small locating surface uh, at a certain position, and we push the external surface up against that locator. They can be machined into the fixture directly, or we can have separate inserts that can be replaced, and those are typically button-shaped or dowels, as we saw in the previous example. Again, the fixed stop means that we're pushing the workpiece up against that locator. So here are some location methods uh, for restricting our degrees of freedom. A plane, if I use a flat surface to locate a workpiece, we're going to re restrict the motion to a plane. And so you should realize at this point, based on what we've done before with datum reference frame, that is going to remove three degrees of freedom. And that means we still have three degrees of freedom left, Translate two translations and one rotation. I can also use a radial locator, as you see here in this example. I've got three radial locators, and each one of them is constraining uh, some degree of freedom. Clearly, we haven't restricted all the degrees of freedom, but you can see each one is restricting rotation about a center point. So the more I add, then the more degrees of freedom will be removed. A concentric locator placed typically in a hole or around a protrusion will just restrict the motion to a simple rotation. Clearly, I'm not able to translate in these directions because of the presence of that locator. The use of the locators obviously depends upon the product geometry at the, that point in time in our manufacturing system. Here's an example of using radial locators for an axial part. So we're looking down from the top here, and we note that we have an axis of symmetry for this part. And that axis of symmetry is being employed here to uh, specify a fixture with three radial locators. We're coming in contact with the surface here, essentially a line at each of the locators. And clearly I can still rotate the axial part, uh, but we've restricted translations in our directions here. So combined with other types of locator, we can restrict all three degrees of freedom. Again, here we should be concerned because obviously this internal diameter is a feature of size. And when you encounter a feature of size, you're worried about MMC and LMC. So we'd have to design this such that the uh, circumscribing circle around our locators is at MMC because we have to be able to accommodate a part up to MMC. What happens as we go to LMC? Well, obviously what's going to happen is we're going to introduce space between the locator. And so essentially we're going to allow this part to move around. And that will introduce uh, error in terms of our process capability. So that's always a consideration in the back of our minds. We're essentially going to compound uh, the dimensional deviation um, by changing the location every time we place that on our fixture. The amount of deviation will obviously be determined by previous processes.
A very common type of fixture configuration is what's known as the 321, and you may have seen this before, where we are removing all six degrees of freedom. And this is really based upon the same principle as our datum reference frame. You can see here that we've got three locators on the primary. And again, if we think of this in terms of establishing a datum reference frame, these three locators here are used to remove three degrees of freedom. And then as we saw in the datum reference frame, I need two additional points on this secondary. And so I put two locators here, and those will remove two additional degrees of freedom, which is essentially uh, a translation and a rotation. And then finally, I have one locator on the tertiary plane here in my fixture, and that locator removes the final degree of freedom, which would be the translation. If we're using locating pins such as what you see here, on each of those surfaces, we'd like to maximize the distance between the pins uh, because, again, you don't want to um, bring these pins closer together because that would emphasize one region of the surface versus independent regions of the surface. So our locators, if they're external, are uh, typically assembled into the fixture. And internal uh, locators for internal features usually are part of the fixture design. Now that's not always the case, but it's quite typical. Modular locators, we can replace individual components in the fixture, remove one that's worn out, and replace it with a new one. We can use locating pins, which are off the shelf, so standard components, and create our work holder. And we can use a V locator, which is essentially two planes to locate a cylinder. Of course, that's going to depend upon the angle of the V that would create the radius of the cylinder uh, in terms of the feature on the part. And the angular tolerance of the V locator is going to be critical. So if I look at a V locator from the end, again, the uh, axis of the cylindrical feature here is running into the slide. I see the planes of the locator that are coming in contact with the surface. So here I've got my two planes of the V. And of course, my concern with a feature of size like this is the difference between MMC and LMC, and also the process direction. So if I have a V locator somewhere on my fixture, there will be a displacement error of epsilon, and that is caused by the deviation in the feature of size. So the other question is, how many degrees of freedom are being removed with a V locator? You should be able to determine that either by looking at directly the constraining degrees of freedom or what degrees of freedom still remain. Note that if you're going to use a V locator, the process direction should be oriented with respect to the V, not perpendicular to that V. Because really with the V, what you're doing is you're locating a plane, and that plane is cutting through the center or the axis of our cylinder. And therefore, if we are performing some type of operation on this feature, we want to be with respect to that axis. Versus here, as you can see, if I apply some type of process uh, perpendicular at, or at some other angle, we're going to see a deviation, an additional deviation from nominal that is caused by our actual surface, which is a feature of size. If you look at that displacement error, we, again, we can use simple triangles to see what's happening here. As this angle theta becomes smaller, Essentially, we are pushing the cylinder further away from the V. The wider we make uh, the angle between those two surfaces, theta is increasing, and we move in this direction. Well, of course, if theta is 90 degrees, then we're just going to have a flat surface, which doesn't make any sense because we are trying to locate the axis of this cylindrical feature. If you look at our uh, distances here. D is going to vary based upon theta that we select. Of course, D at uh, theta equals 90 is going to be zero. Uh, 
And then we have R being the radius <coughs> of our feature. And we note that R can vary based upon the dimensional tolerances between MMC and LMC. So that epsilon is going to be that difference between the distance at MMC and the distance at LMC, which based upon our relationships in the triangle will be the difference between the two, which we already know to corresponds to the process capability numerator. And then in the denominator, we have the sine of theta. So if you plot that, what you see is a dramatic uh, decrease as we increase theta up to some point. And then, of course, we're going to reach asymptotically our value of 0 0.2 in this case, uh, which would be the range of tolerance. So if we select 45, then we have a V block that is uh, at 90 degrees. So V blocks in this region are not preferred. So you want to be somewhere in this region. Obviously, if we're at 90, that is not going to help us locate. So we've got to be less than that. So common V block can configuration would be 45 degrees. Note, we haven't removed all the error. There's still a potential for error there, and that's why we have to pay close attention to our process direction with respect to the V-block. Okay, the key concepts with fixturing. First of all, restrict the degrees of freedom. Primarily with locators that locate surfaces, and the 3, 2, 1 locators correspond to our datum reference frame. In summary, fixtures have to consistently orient and locate the workpiece with respect to our process. And if at all possible, use the datum reference frames based upon the design specification because deviations are going to be determined with respect to those. And then all your degrees of freedom need to be restricted to prevent motion of the workpiece during the operation. So it's not just locating and orienting, but also preventing motion. Here again, we want to rely upon locators and not on the clamping.